Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Gunners, Arsenal, and what the heck is going on with Mikel Arteta's men. They fell to another, and I repeat, another disappointing defeat over the midweek in the Champions League to Inter Milan. A disappointing 1 0 defeat where once again they looked absolutely toothless. Um, and that's been a common struggle for, you know, Mikel Arteta and his men in the current weeks is breaking down teams that play a certain low block. You know, teams that essentially are playing to Arsenal's weaknesses, right? And um, in the recent weeks, people have made a lot of, you know, Arsenal and Mikel Arteta are essentially reverting to a a Jose Mourinho-esque style of play of sorts, you know, prioritizing defense and physicality and trying to nick goals here and there. And many Arsenal fans have attributed that to the loss of a Martin Odegaard and how it's unfortunate and how, you know, really couldn't be held. But the question has to be posed to Mikel Arteta and to the Arsenal recruitment, who coincidentally have lost one of their key recruitment um, people, the director of football, Edu, who has left the club under weird circumstances, but we'll touch on that in another time. Um, but yeah, in terms of recruitments and why they still lack an out-and-out clinical number nine, they lack um, attacking options in, in a squad that are looking to compete on multiple fronts. We look at Chelsea, for example, and again, Chelsea and by no means the, the team to put, you know, to, to, to compare any team to because they are not exactly like the pillar of success themselves but you can see there's a clear and obvious um, strategy there in you know having strength in depth because of the number of injuries that we have gone through Chelsea have gone through in, la in the last few years they've, they've identified the need to have strength in depth not necessarily world class players in every position um, over and over but, but like at least a couple of decent options to, to back up in, in, on occasion in, in case things are not going so well for one and also different profiles of players so if you have a pacey winger you can have an option that um, can essentially beat a man in a 1v1 a tricky winger or one that prefers to cut inside like an Onima Dweke but that's Chelsea are another bag of tricks Arsenal we practically know their front three right it's Saka Martinelli and Havertz and occasionally Trossard is the, the the option, right? Brought in Sterling, they made a whole lot of fuss about Sterling coming in. Sterling is not an option. Sterling is not a good enough option for a side that looking to cheese. He's old, over the hill, and doesn't offer anything different from a Trossard or a, a Martinelli, right? Now, Havertz as your main number nine, not exactly, you know, a world beater either. Sure, he's popped in with a few goals here and there, but not none where he's been the, the standout, you know, player, the one who's created something out of nothing. So it has to be said then that what about further behind, like an Odegaard? You've gone to recruit so heavily on, um, on players that, you know, fit a certain profile of strong defensive midfielders. You spent so much money on Rice last season. And people are now wondering, why did you spend so much money on Rice? Did you need a Rice when you had party? You know, when you had a Jorginho, you had very good central midfielders. That was, mid, midfield was never the problem for Arsenal. Okay, defense. You, uh, you have two very good center backs. Right back, left back, sure, they were your problems. So you went to recruit Calafiori, right? I, I don't see him playing much. Ben White, where's Ben White? You know, you don't spend any money on, on good and decent right backs and left backs for your teams. Zinchenko can't get a sniff. Because he's not good enough. So why weren't you looking to recruit actually world-class left-backs and right-backs? You know, midfield, you've gone to recruit the same type of midfielders. Mikel Marino, a holding midfielder. Jorginho, holding. Partey, holding. Rice, holding to, to an extent. But all, yeah, I mean, he has a profile of a holding, midf holding midfielder. Nothing in the way of creativity. I remember Arsenal from a couple of seasons ago when Chelsea were essentially um, beating them to signings like um, a Mudrik. And I made the point that you were willing to spend so much money on Mudrik. And yet when he left... And didn't go to Arsenal. Where was the recruitment for a replacement? You know, you never really bought a Mudrik type player that you needed. Where Martinelli was clearly not up to scratch. And then you look at your midfield. You wanted Caicedo so badly. Caicedo didn't come. Who was there? Who was, you know, the one? The, the, essentially the, the bruiser that would essentially pick things up in the middle of the park and become like a deep line playmaker. Where was that? You needed a striker. You were willing to shell out so much for a striker of Isak's quality and yet that never materialized and there was no you know, push to get anyone else in. 
It's kind of weird. And then you invest so much into strong, big bodies to try and essentially win games with quote-unquote the dark arts, but shoring up the back. And I think it stems from a from a bit of a, a chastening experience that Arsenal have, have faced in these last couple of years where they've essentially played expansive and good football and still fallen short to the likes of City. And they kind of feel, or maybe Mikel Arteta kind of feels like he cannot beat City on those terms. And so he needs to reverts to a different style of play. It's a similar way to which um, Mourinho used to set up his teams when coming up against Guardiola teams. If you are going to play the beautiful, attractive, expansive football, I will play to frustrate and counter and beat you. He did it with Inter Milan, did it with Real Madrid, um, and I think he tried to do it with Manchester United as well, but that didn't work out too well. But I think football has evolved way beyond that. And so if you're going to try and compete with a Man City, as we've seen with the Liverpool you can't invest in those areas. Liverpool don't have a world-class back four. You know, Van Dijk is the key standout player, right? But Konate, um, Joe Gomez, who else is in, who in that centre-back? Um, yeah, those are the two. Konate and Joe Gomez. Those are their two centre-back options, I think. And then you have Robertson and Trent. And that's it. Simekas occasionally comes in. But at the front is where you see all of the magic. Salah, Darwin Nunez, Luis Diaz, Diogo Jota. Those are solid four options that can continuously rotate. Curtis Jones can come in and do a job. Um, and those are attacking players as well. Jones is an attacking player. You have um, McAllister in there. You have Zoboslai in there. You have Gravenberch, Endo. Good recruitment from club. So even though you didn't see it in the first season, long term, those players can come in. And when Jota is not be able to do a job, Diaz can come and bang in goals. When um, Salah is struggling, you have... Um, Diaz coming in to do a, you know, a very good job. So I think Arsenal have really failed in that sense. And it, I don't know, it's kind of worrying that all of this time they haven't been able to actually, you know, you know, get those options in. Because as we saw last night against uh, uh, Milan, when a team are essentially, you know, camping out from the back, right? Arsenal seem to kind of struggle. Arsenal don't know how to break teams down um, for whatever reason. And so when they get a team like Liverpool that come out to play, they can, you know, break them down um, the way maybe Saka, um, you know, can do on a counter-attack. You know, it looks like Odegaard is back. I didn't even know Odegaard was back. And even then they are losing. So it goes to show that, yeah, it's not really a, a good enough um, a good enough excuse in my opinion. And I think Mikel Arteta really needs to revert to type to the type that actually got him so much success in the beginning of his Arsenal career. He's going to face Chelsea next weekend and I think the owners will be on him to attack. And as we know from Chelsea, I mean, he could get a few goals against Chelsea, but Chelsea are they one of the best counter-attacking teams in the world, probably the best counter-attacking team in the league. And so potentially if he's not able to break Chelsea down in the early stages of the match, the way some teams have been able to like Newcastle and sort of just hold hold, you know, shell up and hold back with a, with a high press and then a low block, he could really, really struggle if Chelsea do are able to soak up the pressure that comes from his team and are able to hit him on the break, you know. But anyways, guys, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Can Mikel Ateta turn it around for Arsenal? It's not by any means the end of the world, do more gloom. It looks like they're really only a few points behind um, top spots in the league. I did say City season was over. That's a bit of a hyperbole. And they are still in and around there with the shouts. But with other teams like Chelsea and Villa breathing down their necks, Nottingham Forest are looking quite good as well. If they're not able to get a victory against us, uh, Chelsea d during the week, it might be a very long season for them. You know, with only a few match days going, I think we are 11 matches into the season. It could be a very tough, tough day for um, the Gunners moving forward. But let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Do you think Arsenal can bounce back? Do you think Mikel Arteta should revert back to his attacking style of play before, you know, he went on this whole dark arts um, bandwagon, essentially, with set pieces and stuff? And guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to our YouTube channel, Telecom Asia Sports, for even more football content, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.